Good morning. Good morning. morning. <laughs> Welcome to Timo. Uh, my name is Julia. I will be one of the lecturers for this course. Uh, and I'll tell you more about uh, the program in a little bit. Uh, for this morning, we have uh, three rounds. Uh, I'll start with a little introduction. So I'll tell you about the program and what you're going to learn about um, a bit in general terms so you get a good overview of it. Then Casper will uh, give you a theoretical lecture, the first theoretical lecture of Timo, and then uh, Christina will move on to the practicalities. So exam and uh, books and case analysis and so on. So I just would like to start with a little video. So now that we solved all the technical issues, let's hope it works. We chose Georgia Tech because we want to do the impossible. And this school is equipped with the resources and faculty to help us do just that. And so, in the words of Sir Isaac Newton, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Georgia Tech is proud of its many traditions, but the one I find most exciting is our tradition of excellence. Our mission as students is not to follow in the footsteps of the astronauts, Nobel Prize laureates, and president who graduated before us, but to exceed their footsteps, crush the shoulders of the giants upon whom we stand. We here are all such innovative people, so I am telling you, if you want to change the world, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. If you want to build the Iron Man suit, you're at Georgia Tech. You can do that. If you want to play theme music during your convocation speech like a badass, we're at Georgia Tech. We can do that. I am doing that. Congratulations on your acceptance. <laughs> and brace yourselves for a hell of a ride on your way to becoming a hell of an engineer. Yes, so now you are all master students here at DTU. I think we should get funny yellow hats for next semester. <laughs> that would be a, a good way to start. So you are on your way to become a hell of an engineer. So why are you here? Why do we get such a big course every semester? Um, with so many of you, so many study lines, so many different types of engineers at the same time. What you do in your education, whatever type of engineering you're studying, is that you're training your technical skills. You're learning how to work with technology, you're learning to develop technology, to improve technology. And if you try to think about the many uh, product breakthroughs that, um, that we have had uh, in our society in the last few decades, what made them so successful? Could we try to start with a tiny reflection and you just talk to the person next to you or what you think technology, what makes technology successful? Could you try to talk with your neighbor for a minute? Hello? Hello? 
Hej, hej, hej. Ja, men vi... Pas, pas. Vi gør den til sådan et lidt et lov. Pas, pas. Ja, now it's, now it's okay. Okay. So now we have an amazing piece of technology that we work with in Timo, uh, and we want you to start uh, getting used to it. So we have a great fro microphone, meaning that when you have questions or you have a comment, you raise your hand and we throw the mic at you, and then you can talk in it. Make sure you talk in the black thing on the cube. So now we have, you have discussed a little bit what makes technology so successful. Uh, does someone have an answer for me? Someone wants to try the mic? We use the technology to improve our um, uh, management system mm -hmm. and we also go to competition for doing better jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, this cause that we uh, be better uh, to understand uh, how to improve products and how to uh, deliver these products to customers who is uh, wanting to use these the products for uh, life cycles, issues uh, to uh, get better quality of life. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is that technology helps, uh, that technology actually helps uh, or is successful when there is a good connection to customer, when there is a good connection to the market to, and to management uh, and so on. Do we have someone else? Yes? I think it's because we are lazy, and okay. technology uh, helps us to uh, keep lazy. It mm -hmm. will do. Uh, we, we can communicate with our phones. We can put our laundry in the laundry machine, and we don't have to yeah, do it ourselves. So mm -hmm. to say. Yes. Thank you. Someone else? Yes, we have on the right. Okay. No, it's meant to be thrown. It doesn't hurt if you get it on your hand. We tried it last semester. I would <laughs> also uh, say price mm -hmm. and how useful the technology is. And mm -hmm. also, um, we have this huge uh, network which really uh, makes, if you, for example, have a useful app or something, it can go viral. And that really also could make it successful. Mm -hmm. Yes. So basically, you are already two steps ahead of me because what I wanted to say is that technology is made successful by engineers, but that's not enough. And as your colleagues were saying, technology to be successful needs to be desirable, sustainable, and feasible. It needs to be something that the people want to use and of course they want to buy. It needs to be something feasible, so it needs to be something that you can actually produce in practice. If you have a great idea for a technology, but then there is no materials existing that can make it work, um, then it's not going to be a, an actual product. And it needs to be sustainable. So it needs to be something that you can keep producing and keep improving over time. Um, so we need to look at customers. You need to look at production. You need to look at the manufacturing. You need to look at the long-term implementation. Another thing is that technology, as uh, your colleagues mentioned, is made for and is made by people. And people are actually um, very unpredictable. Uh, people are complex. People are full of uncertainty. So how do you deal with that? When you put a lot of engineers into a room, you don't only put a lot of technical skills in a room, but you put different personalities, different characters. And how does it work? How do you make sure that they can use their creativity and their innovation to produce something uh, that can be uh, realized and, and put out into the market? Uh, and one thing that we would like you to, uh, to hear about is the case of NASA, and we will talk about it more um, in the later lectures. NASA is a great organization made of a lot of great engineers, um, and uh, they had some problems. You're all very young, Casper is laughing. <laughs> um, you're all very young, I don't know how many of you remember the last mission of the Challenger, who was a shuttle or a part of a shuttle that exploded on its takeoff uh, in 1986. 
Uh, and the interesting part about it is that, of course, there were technical problems behind uh, the explosion, but the reason why the mission was such a, such a failure and the reason why people died in it is that there were communication and management issues behind it. So one of the things that we would like you to learn in Timo is that no matter how good you are in your technical skills, and you will become great at your technical skills here at DTU, there is something else that you need to be aware of. You need to be aware of that you will work in an organization um, where you will have to deal with other people, and at a certain point, it won't be enough to just be able to work by yourself with your technical skills. And I just have some small examples. This is an article that I found on LinkedIn that is entitled Grow Fast Dice Though. And the bottom line of it is that when we're working with technology, we need to look at our market. Because there are a lot of very good technologies out there that don't have a product yet. Um, and because they don't have a, a market yet, they don't have customers. And if customers don't want to use a product, then it basically falls into an empty space. Then I have a catalog of case of NASA-related case studies. This is something you can download from the internet, and if you're interested in the cases, then you can look for the individual <coughs> examples. We will go through one or two of them in the course. Um, and it shows, basically, I went through the whole catalog. It's a lot of cases. Many, many of them are related to management issues. And one thing that really struck me when I was reading one of the cases was that there was uh, one sentence that was saying where one of the, of the guys that were trying to make a decision about this shuttle that was about to explode said, I don't want an engineering decision now, I want a management decision. So basically what the guy was doing was separating between the engineers and the managers. But we're talking about NASA. The engineers need to be the managers and they need to be able to take management decisions and they need to be able to communicate these management decisions. So this is one of the things we will touch upon. And finally, technology is made great by engineers, which is the point where we started. Um, why are engineers so uh, important for technology? Because they're good at solving problems. So even when you're dealing with management issues, with stuff that are not so linked to technology or that you think are not so linked to technology, you actually have a great potential because compared to other type of students, even the management student, you have a great uh, problem-solving skills that you learn while you're developing your technical skills. So what we want to do in Timo is teach you how to use these problem-solving skills in a management way. So how can you use that to learn how to behave within an organization and even how to manage an organization? So, once again, why are you here? We know you are um, from all different uh, lines of studies, uh, and we know that some of you might not be super happy to have to sit here with us. Uh, the reason why we have this course is that uh, about 10 years ago, we had some big companies coming to us and saying, we love hiring your engineers. Uh, they are fantastic, but they are not really good at understanding the organizations they're set in. We need to have, uh, we would like to have a course where you can train them uh, in moving or behaving within a team, within a project, within a whole organization. So that's uh, when we started Timo, and it started just for the engineering management students, and then suddenly all the study line realized this is such an important skill, so we want to uh, take a part in it. And one of the things um, that we hear a lot, or that we heard a lot uh, in the past years, is that, but I don't want to be a consultant. I want to work in a lab. And I don't need to know anything about management and organizations if I'm working in a lab. Well, Technology is uh, just the top of the iceberg. In Timo, we want to teach you about what's below the water, so everything that happens behind technology. And this is something that you need to know, no matter what type of engineers you will be. This is just a simplification, but um, if I just think about my, my brother, he's a biomedical engineer, uh, and he started by um, 
programming software for 3D scans for cancer um, detection, early cancer detection. Um, and he was working by himself in front of his computer, and that's all he needed to know. But now he's at a postdoc and he's working within the team, and actually his boss would like him to become a team manager, so he would like him to manage a whole team. So within three, four years, he went from working by himself, programming on his computer, into running a whole team. And he has never done it before. And he doesn't have a course like Timo um, to give him a background in this. We want to make you able to run a team in a few years, remembering, okay, maybe there are some things that I can think about. If you want to start your own company, for example, if you have a great idea and you want to open your startup, we want you to be able to think about the market, think about the business model, think how can I make this product successful. If you want to work in the Novo Nordisk lab um, and do all the chemical engineering um, things that they do in the labs, we want you to be able, when you're manager will come to you in a few years and say, I think you're doing a great job, you're so great, I want you to run a team and I want you to keep working on this particular research you're doing, but I want you to have three, four student assistants to work with you. We want you to be able to say, yes, I actually know how that works. And we want you to be able to understand that when you're in a project team or when you're working by yourself in the lab, there is something bigger around you that needs to be managed and there are conflicts and negotiation and structures and processes, all things that can make your life, that can be, uh, that can make your life easier if you actually understand them. Do you have any question at this point? Is there any type of, I, I know I didn't mention a lot of uh, types of engineering, but, but do you have something in mind for your future that you don't see an application of Timo for? So you're all very happy to be here. That's a great start. <laughs> well, last year there was someone who actually said, I don't want to be here and this is why. Um, so you're all very convinced. Then um, we can move on. How we will teach you about organizations? Well, we will teach you about technology and management and organizations, uh, and a little bit about economics, very little. Um, and we want to teach you how these four things are connected to each other. We will do it by teaching you the why, uh, the what, and the how. So why do we organize? What do we organize for and how do we organize for it? We want, to, we want to, to teach you how to go through these three questions by solving problems and the technique we use to solve problems in, in Timo, but you can use it also in other areas, is case analysis. So just to start with the why. Why do we organize? If you think about a manager the first job that a manager needs to do is value creation. I hope you can see in the back, if I write here, I'll try to write big. Value creation means that a benefit is being created by the manager for his organization. So that somehow the manager is doing something really good for the organization. And there are two ways that you can create value in an organization. You can work with organizational performance or you can work with competitive advantage. Organizational performance re refers to the internal part of an organization, so it refers how good are we doing. Are we efficient enough? Are we actually, do we have some extra money at the end of the month when we have paid all our production, all our activities, and we have gained money from selling our products? Are we actually making money? And how good are we at making money? And are we good at selling our products to the customers? Competitive advantage refers to the outside of the organization. So it refers to the relationship you have 
with your customers. Are the customers happy about what we are providing them? Are we better than our competitors as selling our products? Are we differentiated enough? What we will do in Timo, we will look at how you create organizational performance and how you create competitive advantage. So, then we move on to the what. And you can see behind me the business model canvas. It's a very famous uh, framework that is being used to describe how an organization relates to its external environment. On the right hand side of the canvas, you have key activities, key resources, key partners. It's everything that you're doing within your organization. So if you're Apple and you're producing phones, then you will have the manufacturing activities, the marketing activities, you will have as resources your, um, uh, the, the, the parts or the, yeah, the materials that you use to produce the phone as a key partners, you will have your suppliers and your distributors and so on. So it's everything that you do inside. On the left hand side, we have the customer relationships, the channels, and we have the customers themselves. So we have the people that are actually using and buying our products. In the middle, there is the value proposition. The value proposition is extremely important because it connects our product with the customers. We need to understand who are our customers, what do we, they want, what does our technology give them uh, that makes them happy and will make them buy the product again. So organizations are basically built around business models or business models are the framework that you can use to see how to make money with your product, with your technology. So you're using the business model canvas to find out how are we making money. Finally, we will teach you about the how. So we will teach you how to organize for your business model. Once you have defined your value proposition, you have decided who is, or you have understood who is your market, what do they want, how do we make them happy with our products, you need to align your strategy with the structure, the processes, the rewards, and the people. These are five different elements of the organizational design that needs to be aligned with the business model. So if you connect the business model canvas with this model, which is called the star model, the business model canvas is in the middle. The business model is at the core, and it needs to be aligned with all of this elements of organizational design. So what the business model does is it links the organization with the external environment. And the star model describes the internal environment of the organization. These are basically the three main building blocks of Timo. Why do we organize? Why do we need to uh, create value? And how do we do it? What do we organize for? So how do we build a business model canvas? Or how do we build a business model? And how do we make sure that the business model works? So how do we make sure our organization supports the business model? Are there any questions so far? Should we take one minute where you talk to your neighbor and you discuss if everything I told you so far was clear and interesting and how much you love this course? Mm -hmm. And then we throw the cube around a little bit more. Just one minute. Talk to your neighbor a bit. Yes? So, you all seem quite happy, but 
Are there any questions? As I told that, that we um, take technology as for improvement, uh, that's why I would like to ask that uh, how you uh, cover problem related to uh, quality of decisions and products and uh, processing decisions in through the, all these uh, structures and organizations that you are going to tell us. Uh, how you see the parameters involving uh, quality of decisions in mm -hmm. this management? Course. Yes. So, if I understood the question right, um, how do you connect the, the problem solving and creating technology that solves problems to our customer with the quality of decision internally? And qualify you to do it. Yes. Um, in the business model, when we, when we will look into the business model canvas, we would look at how do we understand the customers, how do we understand the external environment. So not only the customers, but also your competitors and your suppliers and your partners and so on. And then when we look into the star model, so the, the how part, we would look at how do we translate what we learn about the environment into what we decide within the organization. So we would talk about, um, for example, uh, the, we will talk about how to create a value proposition that connects what we are doing uh, inside the organization with what the outside of the organization wants. So what the customers and the market and the competitor are working with. And we will learn how to work in a group, for example, uh, and to manage processes and to create a structure that supports a good decision making. So basically, we will talk uh, about conflicts and negotiations uh, and, and group management so that you know, okay, now that we have identify, identified who our customers are and what the market and the external environment looks like, how do we relate to each other in a group and how do we turn that problem that our customers have into a product? And we will do this in two ways. First, um, you will actually uh, work with problem solving in, um, in practice. So by working with the actual cases, every week uh, you will have a, a fictitious or a fake case to work with your TAs in the afternoon. But then in the second part of the course, uh, two real companies will come in and they will present you with a real challenge. And what you will be trained to do at that point is identify what are these two companies struggling with, what is their problem, how, and then how can we solve that problem. So we will teach you how to break down that problem and analyze its causes and show why is it a problem, and then say, okay, given that that is the problem, how can we solve it? And then you can propose a solution. So this is what we will teach you to do in Timo. Does that answer your question? I mean, uh, this, this structure you are saying, this is flow of decisions, uh, that uh, it's uh, picking from the top to down, and uh, of course, we, as engineering, you validate your decisions from uh, bottom to top. Yes. It is the way. Uh, but we will talk about both top up and bottom down, or top, no, sorry, <laughs> top down and bottom up. Um, so we will show you how you can act on different levels of the organization um, to take decision and change things. So we will see, is the problem related to, um, to, to the strategy? So how should the CEO deal with this problem? But then we will also teach you to see if the problem is related to operations, so to daily life. And then it's uh, the job of the actual engineers working with the technology to solve that problem. Um, and actually, your question relates to my next point, which is case analysis. Because what is interesting about Timo is not only that we are teaching you theories, but we are actually teaching you how to use it. And we are doing that by teaching you how to work with case analysis. And as I just said, in case analysis, you uh, learn how to identify a problem, understand its causes, and then propose a solution to that problem. So, if we go back to our value creation little scheme here, 
Um, when you work with case analysis, you will start by saying, okay, I am working with this big company, with a bank, that's a case that you will work this, uh, with this afternoon, for example. Um, what is the current situation of the bank? Um, so you will collect data, the company will have given you some data, you will collect other data, and then you will define through a SWOT, which is a model that, uh, that's, that shows you the strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threat, you will understand what is the current situation of the company. And actually, if you look at this, you can do a SWOT, you can map, map a SWOT here, because you have the strength and the weaknesses, we'll talk more about the SWOT later with Casper, but you have the strength and the weaknesses in the organizational performance, because that's what refers to the internal uh, environment of the organization, and then you have the opportunities and you have the threat on the bottom part with the competitive advantage. So what do we learn to do with case analysis? Start with a SWOT, understand, okay, are we dealing with the weakness? So do we need to change something within our organization? Or are we dealing with the threat? Do we need to do something to react to, to something that is happening outside of our organization? And then you're working with competitive advantage. However, what we will also teach you to do is to connect this, because now it's a mess, but organizational performance and competitive advantage, as you might imagine, are very strictly uh, connected. And what you change inside of your organization is going to affect the way you relate to your external environment. And if you change something in your relationship with the external environment, that's going to influence how your organization needs to run. So the last part of the case analysis is actually look at your solution and say, OK, so we worked with a problem that was focused on competitive advantage. So we needed to launch a new, prop, a new product. We needed to find a market for it. We have found the market. We have a very great business plan for it, business model for it. How do we implement it? How is this going to impact on our internal uh, organization? And in the last part of the case analysis, you actually uh, analyze the internal aspects of the organization and see how can I implement this in practice. There is going to be more about case analysis later. But do you have any questions at this point? So, um, what you will do is you will learn how to use the models in the curriculum to work with real life cases. Uh, we have two great companies coming. We have Grumfos and we have Energy. Grumfos is a pump, is the world leader pump manufacturer. Um, and we have Energy, who is uh, one of the biggest um, Germany energy providers that are coming and presenting you with uh, a challenge that they are having. Uh, and they will not tell you what the problem is. So they will present you the situation. They will say, this is where we are at the moment. This is where we would like to go. But we don't really know what the problem is or how it would like to go forward. So it will be your job to identify the problem and propose a solution for them. And I think this, we think this is one of the best parts of Timo is that you're working with something that is real and it's happening. And they actually want to read your reports because they want to learn from it. So it's a great way for you to start practicing being in the real world afterwards. So this is basically an overview of what you're going to do uh, in Timo. Now, you might have noticed that it's a big course, and uh, there are a lot of things attached to it. Um, we try to do what is called blended learning, and it's also due to the fact that there are so many, and there are not a lot of facilities to fit all the students. So we use, uh, we actually stream the lectures, uh, so you can watch them online, and then you can watch the podcast afterwards. Uh, and we use different types of lectures also to, um, to not just be here talking to you for the whole semester, because that would be really boring also for you. So what we would do is 
we will divide, or we have divided, the course into two main parts. Uh, the first part is the one that goes up to the multiple choice exam, and is what we call the sandpit, is the place where you're learning about the models, you're learning about the theory, and you're learning about case analysis. So you're basically practicing. What happens in this first part of the semester is that we have lectures in the morning, and then in the afternoon, you work with the TAs on these four uh, fictitious cases. And this starts today, where you will form the groups you will work with later on. And today, you will actually work with uh, one of the cases that was the exam in the last couple of semesters. Um, next week, and for four weeks, we will have what we call talk shows. So we will start with the theoretical introduction, where we will teach you about theory. Then we have guests coming, having a little talk show for you, so they give a, bit, uh, a small presentation, and then we can interview them and ask them all the questions we have about their cases. And then we have a wrap-up to connect the practice with the theory. Finally, we will do a, a wrap-up and a briefing for your exam, and there is the multiple choice test. The second part of the course is where you're meeting the reward, is where you work with the challenge. So in that part of the course, you're not actually meeting with us, but you're working with the TAs and you're working in group on the real-life challenge. We will meet once for a feedback session where you will have the opportunity to pitch uh, your solutions and the way you're working with the, with the challenge to us and to a guest from the company. The theory is all in the first part of the course. And we're going to tell you more about this later, but we just uh, want you to be aware that this part of the course, the first part, is very theory-heavy, so you need to read the books. And uh, it's, if you read the books, then you can benefit more from the lectures, and then you don't have to read two books right before the multiple choice exam. So we really recommend that you try to come prepared to class, also for your own sake, because we've seen it last semester, that a lot of people had to read close to the exam, and that's really hard because there is a lot of reading, especially if you come from study lines where you're not used of reading a lot of management theories. So, blended learning, it works, as I said, with streaming and podcasts. You can find the videos on the DTU podcast. Um, you can find them on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, where we also upload some additional material. Um, we have a Twitter account, because if you cannot be here uh, with us in class, but you still want to ask questions, we use Twitter to get the questions from you. We know it's not the best way, but it's a way to connect with the, the ones of you that cannot attend in class and still want to ask a question to us or our guests. So please use the Twitter account, even if no one wants to create a Twitter account, but try to take advantage of it. Um, there is also a chat uh, option on the streaming channel, if you want to use that. Uh, we have then the DTU inside, where we will put the extra readings and the cases and all the other material in the file sharing. Uh, we will upload the slides on DTU inside, and we will upload the toolbox. The toolbox is basically one big PowerPoint with all the PowerPoints that we will, or with all the theoretical PowerPoints that we will uh, present you during the course. So it's just a collection of it. If you come to class and take the slides from each class and put them together, it's the same thing as a toolbox, but it's just a way to make it easier. Uh, for those of you who want to be super prepared on the YouTube channel and here on the, on the Prezi, you will have the link to this. Um, there is a video of the presentation of the toolbox from last year. So if you just want to get a general introduction and you want to hear more about it before we have the classes, you can watch it there. I think this was it for my part. It was just a general overview. Um, I am going to give the word to Casper, but first we're going to have a break. Before we go on the break, I know I shouldn't have said the word break, but are there any questions? No. 
One thing that we would like to remind you is please talk to us in class because in the second part of the course there won't be any interaction directly with us. So try to take advantage of the lectures as much as you can and ask questions. And the fro mic is very fun to use, so try to interact as much as you can. So we have 15 minutes break. We come back at 10. Please be punctual so we can start again. Thank you.